my pleasure to be here to share with you this afternoon in this conversation. Uh, I'm bringing to you a training perspective. And I'd like to say I'm bringing it to you from the heart. That is the Heart Trust International Training Agency. We are going to try to have a conversation to see how, from a training perspective, we can bridge this competitiveness gap. And so we're going to look at the link between education, training, see how that connects with work and produce the end game of productivity and prosperity. That is what the discussion map looks like. We want to see what is driving this. What are some objectives? Put it in context. Look at some global perspectives. What are some of the key success factors? And then we will conclude and we can all go home. Here we go. What is driving this? We have heard it this morning. We have heard it many times. We have heard it from the JPC itself. Jamaica's productivity performance in plain language is dismal. And this is in spite of significant, you will agree, modernization within the economy. So what it presents for us is a paradox and also a dilemma. We also understand that there's a body of literature, however, that links training to productivity, and productivity, they tell us also, is linked to competitiveness. So this afternoon, I want to really engage in dialogue to examine these two arguments, and hopefully, we'll arrive at some conclusion that we can go home and fix the problems. At the end of this productivity, symposium, which I think is timely, we really want to see how well we'll be able to align this education and the skills training, which is TVET for us, technical vocational education, how that will reduce the mismatch in the employment scenario. If we're able to do that successfully, it's going to really bring about the transformation that we all seek. So workplaces and individuals become more productive. Business will grow and flourish. They become more competitive. And we will achieve sustainable development. I think that's what we all seek. Put this in a little bit of a context. What we're trying to do here is to see how when we link education, which we call the front end of the business, which is based on the theoretical aspect of the game, how do we align that? In one word, we call it competence. That's the skills, the knowledge, and the attitudes that are required to be demonstrated in workplaces. And so when we bring those two together, together is what we really call TVET. It brings out the interrelatedness between the supply side, which is, training, which is education, and the demand side, which is training. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that there is a conversation taking place globally. They tell us, and we have heard it in many, many discussions this morning, many times, that skills is really the currency of 21st century economies. If that is true, then TVET the field in which we operate at the Heart Trust, then is really central to social and economic development of most modern economies. And most of our first worlds know this. We are beginning to accept this rather belatedly. Now, most of you will also agree with me that to achieve economic transformation requires collaboration, between education, the training, and industry. If we get those three together well, we're going to minimize, hopefully eliminate the mismatch in the workplaces. So that is critical. The ILO tells us that skills development is really about putting people to work, preparing them for work. And this view is also consistent with those of Univoc, 
and Sintifor because they also tells us, tell us that competitiveness is based on productivity and productivity, not surprisingly, is linked to training. That takes us to a brand new scheme of things which we call the new work order. In this new work setting, the whole game has changed. Work processes becomes more technical and complex. There is more cultural diversity at the workplace. There is a greater need for multiple intelligence to be applied on the job. And this whole business of personal leadership, we call it initiative. Autonomy and accountability are common in the workplace because people are asked to multitask because that's what the environment is about. We know that in all of what we heard this morning, this morning we heard a lot about the problems. These are some of the reasons. The barriers, obsolete technologies, inefficient production system, rigid and unresponsive structures resulting in the low productivity, and the skills mismatch that is taking place. On the other side of the coin, we have the drivers of competitiveness, which is where we want to spend our time. So we have to look at modernizing our plant and equipment. We need more productive, um, efficient systems, and especially from where we come from, we want to really encourage a, a trained and certified workforce. If we are able to do that, then we want people who really subscribe to the philosophy of continuous learning. We want people who are dynamic and are able to survive in this flexible environment. Sometimes people say hostile. We have to be more adaptable to the changing labor market dynamics. And we must not only embrace, we have to accelerate technological inno innovations. Here's where we come in. With all of that what's happening, heart has a response. So like the UNIVAC and the ILOs, we recognize that the trust, that training not only optimizes the human potential, it actually transforms human resources into human capital. And that is what is going to add the value in the workplace. So we know, and if you don't believe me, the others have told you as well, that a trained workforce is more efficient. It leads to optimal standards of performance, which in itself leads to productivity, international competitiveness, and we remove from the vicious cycle of poverty to the virtual cycle of economic prosperity. So here is how we actually get it on the ground. This is what the what the who, the when, and the where. So we have set about establishing work that facilitates a seamless articulation and certification to, to the highest levels of the education system. We are really operating in the post-secondary education zone. And we are here to take you through workforce colleges to the highest level of the education system. So the emphasis in a workforce college, not like the usual college that you might be um, accustomed to, is really about upskilling of industry persons, providing them with professional advancement and product development. All of this is geared towards workforce development and productivity. So the key features you'll find in a workforce college is internship, experiential learning, and entrepreneurship. A synopsis of what the TVET Institute looks like. It's really central to the integrated training system. The integrated training system for us is that system that is linking secondary to tertiary. So we are pretty much like at the crossroads, facilitating that seamless transition from secondary through to tertiary. And so it is designed to give that seamless articulations from person coming from the lowest levels 
to go where they want to go. In a TVET institute, what you will get is the underpinning knowledge that is required for higher level matriculation. The focus in our language is on levels one to three of the technical operating model. That's the operating framework that we operate. Our community training interventions, we're really operating in communities right across the island through what we call projects. Many of them are NGOs, we're working along with them and they are strategically placed in communities to really respond to the demands within those communities at the lower levels. And the terminal objective is to really empower community, to provide them with the means for self economic self-reliance, and really to promote this business of social inclusion at the community level. So we will tell you that part of our mandate is to treat with all our constituents and nobody is really left out of the business. A more enterprising unit within the structure is the Business Development and Workforce Solutions Department. It facilitates business development and their growth, particularly MSMEs, it also promotes productivity improvement, workforce development, business credentialing. What we mean here are the itinerant business persons who need some structure. We're helping them to gain some structure, put some order to their business that they can grow and develop, pay the 3% of a pool of Revenue gets larger, we are able to dispense greater benefits to the society, and everybody lives happily after. We have the on-the-job training, and more specifically, our school leavers training opportunities program, the SL Top, our internship, work experience, and apprenticeship. And the literature tells you that those who in turn are the ones who stand a better chance of gaining sustainable employment. And they also have a better chance of gaining a better salary than those who have not. So again, internship is big on our business. So it takes us to apprenticeship, something I'd like to really sensitize this audience about. What is apprenticeship? Structured system of training that is designed to prepare individuals for an occupation really combines on-the-job training with the theoretical underpinning. What's the objective of doing all of this? Those who have been there, those who have operated a successful apprenticeship program, and have we, we have been there in the past, it prevents labor market failure, and it minimizes dysfunctionalities within the labor market, meaning that it cuts out this artificial shortage and labor demand and prices go up, price for labor and things like those. It creates some amount of order in the labor market. It's also a mechanism for social inclusion. It creates workforce stability and sustainability and provides for the intern, the trainee, a learning platform for transitioning into a career. But what it does for the country is really the final analysis to create a pool of competent technicians that can satisfy industry needs. A little bit of history. We had an apprenticeship program launched in Jamaica back in the 50s. But it was very limited in scope, became unattractive, and like the gentleman before us, it died. So, what it means, we cannot continue like that. Because we will continue to really misallocate our resources. So there are some implications flowing out of that. What we know is that in a modern economy, the labor market continues to shift. Now if our workers are not able to transition into these new jobs and new industries, 
when the shift takes place, then that dysfunction we talk about takes place. So labor becomes expensive because there's a shortage and the productivity goes down. And I don't know how much lower it can go. Right? And the businesses become uncompetitive. So this takes us, colleagues, for, uh, to the business case for the RAP, the Registered Apprenticeship Program. That's what it looks like. It's not fully launched as yet. We're going to have a soft launch, and we will do all the sensitizers and that is necessary. But essentially, what you have here, to the left upper, it tells you again the technical side of the apprenticeship program is to prevent that labor market failure and to, to facilitate succession planning. On the right hand side, it's, so, it's a social underpinning com component of it, where it provides for that apprentice a sense of social and civic responsibility. So you'll develop the hard skills over here, and you're beginning to understand what a citizen is all about and how you must behave. So that, that is embedded in the program. Except my battery is gone. Looks like the battery is gone. Any, we need help. <laughs> Productive is being threatened now. Uh, oh, okay. Now, for this, for this apprenticeship program to work, there are some key success factors. And some of them, if not all of them, are already in place. But we have to maintain and sustain them. So there's a modern legislative framework that is being developed. I told you that the thing has, is being revamped. There's an apprenticeship board in place. And that's what we call the visionary and dynamic board that will guide the process. There's employment engagement, employment buying has taken place, employer buying has taken place. There is leadership through the heart trust and advocacy. We are advocating for this thing. And there's on-the-job mentorship that is required. Now, workplaces will have to buy into that. They have to provide on-the-job supervision, and the trainee, of course, has to commit to the process. So it takes us to value, and we heard the word many times. What's the value proposition? Where I say there are three stakeholders at play here. There's this thing called government and society. And that's probably we, eh? all of us. And there are the employers. And then there are the individuals, the trainees themselves. Let's see how it works out for each. From the government perspective, this is what the value system is saying. It will reduce unemployment. It will contribute to the formation of social capital. It will increase economic benefits because wages will be paid. It will also increase social benefits because trainees will eventually pay taxes. It facilitates social inclusion because if wages are paid and taxes are being paid, then social welfare will be taken care of and our am amenities should be improved and the antisocial behavior that we all are concerned about, hopefully, will be minimized. So that's what's in it for us, society and government. How the employee sees it, he knows that he's going to help him to prevent this labor market failure. Workforce is aging. He has a crop of young guys coming through to take place. So everything is in good order. That's the predictability and the stability we talk about, and the succession planning. And it creates a cadre of trained workers. So even if they are poaching, they are getting their poaching from you know, a trained group of persons. And it helps employers to control their recruitment costs. And those who are in HR tell you how much it costs to, to retain of TVET 
All over the world, TVET is big business. We are still scoffing at TVET. And we have to be able to demonstrate TVET's role in workforce productivity and competitiveness. So going forward, we have to leverage the expertise through tripartitism. We have to work together. We have to position the priority sectors for the productivity improvement and international competitiveness. And in the 2030 vision, there are some prescribed areas for hard trust in, the, in, in that vision. We have to reframe the structures, some of them too rigid, and our policies are outdated in order to respond to the new dynamics. And our program has to be ration, rationalized to reflect what the labor market says. And very importantly, we have to integrate our graduates into this new work order. And so, colleagues, in concluding, if we really align education and training, we will minimize the mismatch. And we're not only going to minimize it, we may even eliminate it, but we're going to solve some productivity issues, and we're going to ensure that this Jamaican economy becomes competitive. We see the apprenticeship program, among other things, as one mechanism, at least, to satisfying these changing labor market dynamics. And I'm here to assure you that after 30 odd years in the business, Hart has both the capacity and the credibility to lead this process. So we are providing leadership, and we are also advocates. And we realize that we have to do it together. Hence the reason for that tripartite engagement. Thank you very much.